Sean Davis understands this. He's the co-founder of The Federalist. We're happy to have him join us tonight. Sean, thanks so much for coming on. So before we get to the things that we would like to know about January 6th, and, and there are quite a few of them, the two red flags in my mind are, one, the fact that Adam Kinziger is mindle mindlessly supporting it, so of course it's probably dumb, but two, and, and more to the point, the hysteria, the overheated rhetoric, the clearly disproportionate, almost lunatic descriptions of what happened on January 6th tell you that this isn't really a bipartisan effort to get to the truth, is it? No, in, in fact, it looks a lot more to me like Mueller 2.0, just as uh, the hmm. Mueller probe in 2017 uh, was based on a lie, the lie of Russian collusion, which didn't exist. Uh, and it was based on that because they wanted to be able to get Trump and they wanted to be able to have all the law enforcement powers that come with the special counsel to go after his people, go after him, accuse him of collusion and obstruction of justice. This new commission is no different. It's, it's Congress. It wants all of the law enforcement powers that DOJ usually has to subpoena, to indict, uh, maybe even to imprison if people don't, com uh, don't do what Congress wants them to, if they're contemptuous of Congress, heaven forbid. And, and the whole thing is political nonsense. It's, it's meant to give them something to hang on to for the next two years, heading into 2022, that they can use to demonize their opposition, to shut their opposition down, and make sure that they have no one challenge them heading into the next election. But back up three sentences. This gives Democrats in the Congress effectively police powers as they had during the Mueller probe. I mean, that seems like the essence of it. This empowers partisans to go after their political opponents. Right. At least with the Mueller probe, you had it somewhat outsourced to an agency that has all kinds of rules and procedures, uh, many of which were never followed, which is how you end up with completely fabricated FISA warrants. But they're taking upon for themselves those those powers. And, and I think the, the most difficult one is really subpoena. Who are they going to subpoena? What limits are there to their power to compel testimony? Can they just call in any MAGA grandma who happened to be within 500 miles of the Capitol uh, and harangue her and demand that she uh, sit before their inquisition? Uh, judging by their rhetoric, I, I don't think they're acknowledging any limit on their powers. And that's actually really scary. And if you care about democracy and the integrity of it, I, I don't see how you can possibly allow something like this to happen when we know how Democrats handle things. Just look at Brett Kavanaugh. I'm a little confused even by the public claims of Democrats that we need more power to get to the bottom of this. As far as I understand, we've had the most vigorous law enforcement response to what happened on January 6th that I've seen in, really since 9-11. I mean, you've got dozens of people sitting in solitary confinement tonight for the crime of trespassing. You see this, the NSA, CIA, FBI, U.S. attorneys across the country all mobilized in response to January 6th. So uh, we haven't done enough? Apparently not. And, and what's really fascinating to me is I thought Democrats had already solved this little puzzle back in January when they impeached Trump over it and blamed him for inciting it. What else is there to investigate? Right. They told us it was all his fault. So what are they doing now? Yeah, this has got nothing to do, by the way, with Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not in office anymore. It has to do with the rest of us and, and the country. And that's who they're going after, not Trump. Sean Davis, I appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank you for that. Thank you.